What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the garage. We're back here once again doing another video. Today we're gonna to be working on the EcoBeast once again. And as you know, this is the powerhouse of the house of all the vehicles that we got. This one by far is the quickest, it's the biggest, it's just the most amazing. So to continue that theme and to make this EcoBeast even more of a beast, we're gonna be adding another modification today. A modification I've been waiting for, been saving up for because it is a little pricey, but I think it's well worth the money. It is this guy right here. Extreme DI's high pressure fuel pump for this F-150. This guy here is XDI 35, about 35% more flow. And this guy is going to be the foundation, the basis, which allows us to take this guy into the E85 range because as you guys know, or if you don't, the stock fuel system on these 2014 F-150s is a limiting factor when it comes to E85. It doesn't have enough flow for it. So that's what this guy is going to remedy. So when you get your fuel pump, guys, you're gonna have this little installation paper here. Pretty much it gives you a written version as well as a YouTube video, which I'll go ahead and link below just in case you guys want that link. Or even better yet, you can watch my video. So your choice. And in that manual there that you'll see, they'll give you a whole list of tools that you'll need which is a variety of tools torque wrenches line wrenches crow's feet different size sockets wrenches breaker bars allen wrenches it'll give you the whole nine yards in there as well as they recommend getting a new roller tappet from ford pretty much that's at the bottom of this pump at the top of the cam lobe up there that's what pushes that guy up and down to create the pump so they recommend replacing that while you're at it. And as you guys already know, I have an ethanol content sensor right over there. It's spliced into the existing stock high pressure fuel pump, but I'm actually gonna be changing up that fuel system or that fuel point there just a little bit. I didn't like the bend from that high pressure fuel pump over to the stock fuel line. So we're gonna try to remedy that today. I got some new 45 degree connectors, quick connects, which will then connect to the fuel pump It'll get rid of most of that bend in the hose and I think it's going to fit a whole lot better. So if you guys aren't familiar with where the high pressure fuel pump is, it's actually where you've seen in the last video when I was installing that ethanol content sensor. It's just up underneath that little sound dampening device there. This is pretty much the stock one here and that's what we'll be replacing. So first things first, cleanliness is the top priority with this project because when you're dealing with the fuel system, dealing with these high pressure fuel pumps, the number one killer of these fuel pumps, which could be catastrophic for your engine, is dirtiness, dirt, debris, dust. So you wanna be very, very attentive to how clean your area is. So before we get started, I'm actually just gonna clean up this whole area with a little bit of air, break clean, and then some shot towels, then we'll get going. So now I got the area cleaned up and we are ready to move on. So next up, what we're gonna actually do is make our way up underneath the truck. Just like you saw in the last video when I did the ethanol content sensor, we're gonna be disconnecting that little fuel pressure control module right down there. You can watch that video just to see exactly where it's at, but we're gonna disconnect that so we can get all the fuel pressure out of the line, out of the system. So when we remove that pump, we won't have to worry about fuel squirting anywhere. All right, so we're now good to go there. Went ahead and disconnected that, turned on the engine, let it run until it drained all the fuel pressure out of the line. So next up, go ahead and disconnect your battery and we'll get ready to start taking that guy off. I got some shop towels ready just in case there's still a little bit of residual fuel pressure in there. So you'll get you a little 17 millimeter line wrench and simply slide it on there and remove the nut. Then once you have that nut off, You'll go ahead and just simply disconnect a little pigtail down here, which is where your fuel pressure connector is. Wiggle that off, set that aside. And now what you'll do is you'll disconnect the low pressure side. Um, I'm actually just going to take it off of the hose clamp here because I have a new hose. So you guys will just pretty much just unplug it from here with the quick connect and we'll get ready to start taking this off. All right, so now that you got your pigtail disconnected, high pressure and low pressure line disconnected, it's time to start taking off the fuel pump and it's a 10 millimeter bolt on both sides. So you'll want to do it in an alternating motion. Start a little bit on one side and then just continue to go back and forward and back and forward until you get it all the way off. And there we go. Got that fuel pump off. A little bit of fuel is leaking, so I'll put this back down there. And this guy is ready to come out. There we go. There's your stock fuel pump. Still a little bit of fuel on the line. So keep your shop towel handy. Now that the fuel pump's gone, you can gain access to the little roller tappet, which is on the inside. Stick your finger in there, pull up, 
you fill it slide out there it is so here's your old roller tappet and then before you install your new roller tappet you're going to want to get some clean 5w30 motor oil and make sure it's well lubricated and coated in the oil before you slide it back in and just make sure you put it right back in just how you took it out and there you go and now we're getting ready to put in the new high pressure fuel pump. I actually lucked out because you need to make sure that the camshaft lobe is at bottom dead center. And mine actually was once I turned off the vehicle. So we lucked out there. But if it's not and you see the little roller flap it up towards the top, just simply turn over the engine with a long breaker bar on the little camshaft bolt down there, 18 millimeters. And that'll allow you to turn the engine to push this down. And while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and loosen up this little bolt down there. It's a little eight millimeter. That just holds the high pressure fuel line and we're gonna need to actually bend it just slightly here in a second. So you can loosen that and that'll allow you to get a little bit more wiggle room. And now it's time for the fun part. Time to get ready to install the new high pressure fuel pump. And as you guys can see, just the size difference, just the amount of pump you have here now in comparison to the stock. That's pretty much how they allow 35% more fuel flow than stock just because of the sheer size so keep these little yellow plugs on at all times we're going to keep them on to just before we connect those guys up because like i said at the beginning dirt and dust is the killer of fuel pumps and you don't want to damage this guy because it's pretty expensive as you guys already know if you do have one so yeah we're just not going to even mess with those what you're going to have to do before you get ready to install is you're going to have to turn the base of this fuel pump as you can see it moves you're going to turn the base so you can get access to these two larger mounting holes on each side that's where you're going to install the larger two of the bolts that they supply and these are a six millimeter allen wrench i have a little allen adapter here that i'm going to be using to install but yeah like i said don't take the base plate off just turn it until you can get access to both of those holes and you'll be good to go all right so now with your fuel pump turned to the right orientation you'll go ahead and just set it right back on the existing spot for it so now we'll go ahead and get these bolts tightened down just little by little in an alternating manner and then once you have those bolts fully seated go ahead and torque them down to 25 foot pounds and there we go now those two are torqued down so now you have those bottom bolts torqued now you simply just turn the pump until these top two bolts which I just put in off camera fall into their holes which they are now then you'll simply start tightening them but you're going to do them in alternating quarter turns because there's an o-ring under there and you want to make sure that o-ring stays nice flush and level and once you got those top bolts fully seated, go ahead and torque them to 14 foot pounds. I've used a 3 16 Allen adapter right here and got them torqued down nice and tight. All right, so now that you got those bolts torqued and tightened, it's time to line up the high pressure fuel line with the little port there. So as you can see, it doesn't line up correctly. So I'm gonna use a brake line bender and I'm gonna adjust it until it fits and sits flush inside that little pocket there. And now you take a little bit of the clean motor oil and kind of just lube up the threads just a little bit, not too much. And you want to retrieve that little flare nut that may have fallen. And you're going to hold the fuel line in place like that. Then you'll tighten the nut off. Once you have the nut fully seated, finger tight, you'll go ahead and begin to torque it. It's going to be a two-phase torque. You're just going to start with going to 133 inch-pounds. You're going to need a little crow's foot adapter, 17 millimeter, in order to torque this guy on there. But yeah, so we'll go ahead and get torquing. Just like that. And then the second phase, what you're going to do, you're going to go ahead and tighten it an additional 30 degrees or until it hits all the way to 37 foot pounds. Depending on which one's first, you'll just stick with that. So if you hit 37 first, stop. If you hit 30 degrees first, stop. And 
and I hit third degree first, so we're good to go. And then down here at the bottom, you'll go ahead and tighten up that bracket bolt, 71 inch pounds, and we're pretty much done with the high pressure side. All right guys, so I skipped ahead just a little bit on the low pressure side. What I really didn't show you was just that I changed up my low pressure connection between the ethanol content sensor over here and the high pressure fuel pump. It used to be a straight quick connect at the bottom, but I changed it over to a 45 like I said at the beginning of the video. But it's just as simple as connecting your quick connect to the high pressure fuel pump. If you have the stock fuel line, it just clicks right in. Or if you have an adapter like this, it also just clicks right in. So we're good to go there. Low pressure is connected. High pressure is tightened down and torqued. All the bolts are torqued on the high pressure fuel pump. Last but not least, we'll go ahead and connect the little adapter over here for the pigtail. All right, so here's the little adapter that they give you. And simply, as you can see, one side's black, one side's gray. From the vehicle, it's gray. From the pump, it's black. So they connect just as simple as that. And we are good to go and connect it. And pretty much with that, we are done with the install of that high pressure fuel pump from XDI. Next up, we're gonna get ready to start checking for leaks. But first, we're gonna go ahead and reconnect the negative cable on the battery. I'll go back underneath, reconnect a little fuel pump control module, and then real quick, I'll stop inside, flash in the new tune, which I have from MPT Tuning, which will give me all the benefits possible with this pump, and we'll start it up and check for leaks. All right guys, now we got the fuel pump control module on, the new tune in, and the battery connected. So now, just cycle the key a couple times, do not turn it on, but just cycle the key to rebuild pressure into the fuel line and we're gonna check for leaks. Just to be at least a little careful, I'm gonna stick a little bit of shop towels just underneath the lines. All right, so far no leaks. It's gonna probably run rough while it purges out all the air from the system but I think that's a successful install guys and just like that guys you have now successfully changed out your high pressure fuel pump or I should say the stock little one for the XDI's 35% more high pressure fuel pump and it wasn't too bad it wasn't too difficult it was just uh, once again a weird spot to work with so other than that I want to thank you guys once again for watching there's going to be plenty more coming, so make sure you guys stay tuned, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, and let's see what we got coming up next. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one.